Krishnaika, welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, we will try to understand how you can actually contribute to open source libraries or projects in data science, which is specifically with respect to machine learning or deep learning. Now, some of the libraries I'd like to mention is like OpenCV, you have Keras, you have TensorFlow. TensorFlow is pretty much popular, which was developed by Google, and now it has been provided as an open source. Now, the best way and why you should actually contribute to this kind of open source libraries is that, guys, understand for the people who are actually making a transition towards data science, for the freshers who want to get into data science, right? If you put this information into your resume that you have contributed in some of the open source project or open source libraries, the recruiter will have a wonderful impression, you know, because you have actually developed something, you have contributed to the data science community wherein your changes or your code is basically being used by such a huge community right data science community is a huge community and the type of research that are going on it's amazing right now when they're using it and when the recruiter comes to know through your resume and when you explain them that yes you have contributed to this definitely they'll be having a wonderful impression because there are so many issues that are coming up in open source libraries and definitely many and there are many people also who are contributing to it and they're giving a wonderful solution itself so in this particular video we'll try to see how we can go ahead and try to understand the or see those kind of issues how we can actually contribute to this i'll just try to say it step by step now before going ahead with respect to this particular video guys if you're looking for career transition advice towards data science please make sure that you watch this video till the end because i'm going to share some of the important information at the end of this particular video so let's go ahead and try to see that how we can contribute to the open source libraries. So uh, let's go ahead and see guys. So first of all, I've searched what is an open source project. You need to know the definition of open source project. So we can say that when a project is open source, that, that means anybody is free to use, study, modify, and distribute your projects for any purpose. This permission is enforced through an open source license. Now how you can see this open source license, just open a new tab, like I'll just type it over here as Google TensorFlow GitHub. And when I go and click this link guys, you will be able to see the GitHub link over here. Uh, now here you can see that uh, this is basically the TensorFlow GitHub. All the code is present over here. There will be one file which is called as license. So this is basically the open source license. There will also be a readme file. The readme file will basically be having a lot of information like how you should install this library in, inside your system and how you can actually implement it, right? So all these information are there. And it will also give you some of the information from where you can actually practice some more tutorials and all other things like to a TensorFlow YouTube channel is also there where they'll put a lot of videos so that you will be able to understand. Now the main thing is that, okay, this is just like an open source library, right? And you also saw that uh, there is an open source license, right? Now, suppose I, I go inside one of my repository like Docker's, okay? And in Docker's, you can see that I have, I have not put any license file. I can use it later on. Uh, what I'll do is that I'll just go inside this issues folder, okay, in issues tab. So when I goes in, go, go inside this issue tab, you'll be able to see that there are some issues that will be getting created with respect to uh, the people raising some kind of issue because they have faced, you know, after they cloned this particular repository, they have faced some type of problems that they were not able to execute that particular code. So one of the example over here is, you can see that Flask URL is not opening. So this was the comment that has been given with respect to the problem statement. After that, what I have done is that, you can see that there they can be many people who can actually give comments on that also. So I have also given a comment what he has to, he or she has to do. Similarly, after that, this comment has been going on and finally I have given a comment itself. Once this is fixed, you know, I can close this particular issue also. But this was just a simple issue. Now, when if I go to GitHub, right? And if I go to GitHub issues, right? There are so many issues as such that has been raised. You can see that, with different different tabs like you can uh, apply a filter over here there are various filters open issues pull request different kind of requests all are there now what you can do is that suppose there is one 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 uh, suppose you feel that okay one of the bug you can actually fix it what you can do is that then you just have to fork this repository now when you fork this repository guys understand the same fork will be present in your github repository so if i click it over here you will be able to see that now this TensorFlow is basically forked inside my uh, GitHub repository, right? Now whatever changes I need to do, I can actually clone this in my local repository, make the changes, again commit it over here. After committing it, suppose I have to again merge back to the same TensorFlow project itself or open source library over there itself. What I can do is that I can actually raise a pull request. 
Now suppose imagine guys, I have actually made some changes in readme file. Okay, I've, I've just made some changes in readme file. And some of the mistakes that uh, usually happens in guys in readme also, there may be some spelling mistakes. You can fix that and you can also provide that thing in your open source app. You can contribute that by fixing that particular spelling mistake and again committing back to the TensorFlow GitHub or any other open source libraries that they're actually using. I've seen many of my friends doing that and they basically say that yes, we have contributed to open source project because many people are using that because they have actually changed the spelling mistake, right? So uh, what we can do is that just go to the pull request I'll just raise a pull request then whatever changes that you have done inside your repository, all the changes will be seen over here. You can see that these are the changes that you can see over here. Okay, I have just removed this dot, uh, full stop, and I'm just, I'm not committing as such. I'm just showing you an example that as soon as you make some changes and when you make a pull request, the pull request that you're going to make is in the master of the TensorFlow GitHub itself. And remember guys, once this pull request, when, once you create this pull request, there will be people who will be seeing, right? There will be people from the from the TensorFlow community, you know, they will be seeing whether this com, uh, commit is correct or not. If it is correct, then only they'll merge it. Otherwise, they'll not merge it. Okay. Now, some of the uh, steps that I can show you. Uh, let me just go back to my repositories and show you one example. You know, I had made one spelling mistake in my readme file. So you can see over here in stock price prediction using Keras and recurrent neural network. Here, if I if I go to my issues. Uh, if I go to my pull request, right? So I can see that there is one closed pull request. Now, what was this closed change that he had actually made? Uh, there was a guy, Priyansh. Uh, what he did is that uh, in the readme file, you know, I had actually written a spelling mistake. So he can, he, you can see over here, what kind of, uh, he's saying basically he's fixed a spelling mistake. Now let's see the updated readme file, okay? Now here you'll get an idea what was the previous Previous the spelling was something like this. There was no K over here. Later on he, he added that K and then he 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 pushed this particular change by creating a pull request. And after that, finally, I was I am the owner of this particular GitHub repository, so I merged it. So it comes to me, I'll review that and then I'll merge it. So if you go inside this closed status, you'll be able to see that I have merged it and I've actually closed this. Okay. So this was in short about one of the way. Again, in GitHub, uh, in TensorFlow GitHub, as I said to you that once you are making this pull request and once you are making, once you are creating this pull request altogether, this will be going to this master branch for the merge purpose, okay? Over there, somebody will be reviewing who is the owner of that particular GitHub repository. He'll be reviewing whether the changes are correct or not. If he finds it is correct, uh, he may merge it. Otherwise, he, if he has some comments to give to you, He'll again give back some comments and he'll tell you to fix that particular issue and come back. Now why this is pretty much important guys. Not only this, you can see that there are a lot of projects like Keras GitHub. If you go and search Keras GitHub. So yes, uh, in Keras also there is a GitHub. Here also you can contribute and you can see there are a lot of issues. Okay, if you feel that there are, there are any specific issues that you can fix, definitely go with this. Apart from that, you can also see that so many people are actually contributing. See, all this pool request that has been raised, right? These are from people who are fixing things, right? And this is pretty much amazing, you know? So many people are contributing and definitely, I've seen many people who's having in their LinkedIn, right? They, they write the title like they are the contributor in the open source libraries, you know? And uh, probably they are they're also like freshers, you know? They're, they're the people who are actually working in some of the companies also, right? So this thing will also help you to get internship guys. Trust me in that because I've seen many students getting internship because of this. Uh, one example that I have seen is one is GSOC. That is Google Summer of Code. So here you can see that Google Summer of Code has every year, you know, they try to uh, intern some of the people who are actually contributing in one of the open source projects. And how, how do they find out? Now you see. If I just go and search in view projects and if I just search a project name, suppose I write uh, deep learning, okay? Let's, let me see whether something will come or not. I think, uh, okay. Now in deep learning, there are so many people who are working in this, right? Now let me just go and click on view by organization, okay? Now suppose you want to find out, suppose you are trying to apply and guys, the date has been over. Definitely you'll be able to apply from December. So just try to do it from your side in Google Summer of Code, how you can apply. There are a lot of steps involved in this, but I'll just give you an example. Probably in the next video, I'll show you a detailed uh, how you can actually 
you know, uh, apply for this Google or Summer of Code for internships because you're getting paid away. You'll get somewhere around $3,000 for three months, you know. So it's amazing. Now, suppose I want to search an organization on technology or topic. Suppose I search deep learning, okay. So nothing, I'm not getting anything. Uh, let me see for TensorFlow, okay. TensorFlow library will always be there. So let me just... Okay, I'm not getting anything as such. Okay, when I'm searching TensorFlow, I'm getting so many things. So this, this all, this all uh, companies are actually working in this particular technology itself. If I select the categories also, so they are categories, different different categories that we can actually search. Let me see. With respect to this, suppose if I select other, you can see that when I'm selecting others over here, you can see TensorFlow and Open Mind. Okay, so these are the companies who are specifically working on TensorFlow and if you have contributed in this, okay, if, if you if you have already contributed in this, then what you do is that you actually actually create a, a resume kind of guidelines, you know, where you, when you want to apply for the Google Summer of Code. And uh, over there, if you write that you are an open source contributor, specifically in TensorFlow, and remember guys, you can apply in any of the organization that has been shown over here, okay? You can apply in Open Mind also. You can apply in this also, okay? And if you are actually writing in your resume or in in, in the uh, CV that uh, you have already contributed into the data science uh, libraries or the open source libraries definitely that will be creating a wonderful impact so many people who have done that already are able to get internships in GOC very very easily but I will try to make a detailed video how you can apply how you can actually create that specific resume you have some specific guidelines that you need to follow according to this particular uh, Google Summer of Code guidelines, you know. So they have some template, you have to follow that particular template, you have to create a resume in that specific way. So considering this, you can definitely do this. And uh, I, I, what I'll do is that I will also call one person who has actually got an internship in GSOC and we'll try to have a podcast with him. And with respect to that, he'll also try to show you all the steps that uh, he can actually follow here. He has actually followed to get the internship. So yes, uh, this was an idea about open source, how to contribute to open source uh, libraries. And trust me guys, this is pretty much important. I've given just an example. You can fork it, you can you can uh, fix that issue and again pull it. And if suppose you are raised also, you can also raise an issue, suppose some of the issues that you are actually fix, facing, right? And based on this particular issue, you know, if, you, if I just go and click on this particular issue and see what are the comments that are there, you can see that, um, suppose this is the comment, right? And with respect to this, these are the things that he has actually mentioned. He's also given some research paper link over here. Then what he can do is that he can basically assign to different different people also. The bot, TensorFlow, uh, you know, there'll be a kind of, I mean, the TensorFlow, uh, the contributor from the TensorFlow side. Then this particular bug can also be getting assigned to different different people and they can actually assign different different uh, tags over here like support features and many more things so uh, definitely it is there you can easily participate in any open source libraries i've also showed you about pycarrot so if i just go you and show you about pycarrot here also many people are actually contributing in this particular github also so what you can do is that just go over here in pycarrot you have uh, like issues the issues are raised over here you can go and fix this issues and definitely after you fix at least one issue, you can definitely write, write that you are an open source contributor. And at all, this will be a wonderful thing in your resume. So guys, if you are looking for career transition advice towards data science, please go and watch Springboard India YouTube channel. Because there you'll be able to see a lot of videos from real world data scientists who are working in different different companies. The link of the channel is given in the description of this particular video. So yes, this was all about this particular video. I hope you like it and if you have any uh, questions please do comment down in this particular video and as we go ahead guys I'll also be coming up with a separate video of how to apply in GSOC. Please make sure that you subscribe the channel guys we are very much near to 200k and uh, thank you for all the love and support that you have given for this particular channel. Uh, I will be investing a lot of time in contributing more to other data science communities through this particular channel by providing some awesome and wonderful videos. So yes, I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day. Thank you one and all. Bye-bye.